Welcome to Tech Report. I'm Bridie Barry. First, we had smartphones and smart TVs. Now, we have smart homes. Unlike your average home, smart houses allow various systems and devices in the home to communicate. Well, to tell us more and to explain just how smart homes actually work, Sky News business reporter Matt Gallant spoke to Chris Hall from EnviroNexus. Chris Hall, thank you for talking to us today on Sky News Business. Firstly, can you please explain the concept of a smart house? A smart home. Yeah. There you go, uh, smart home. Yeah. No, generic, uh, generic term, I guess, that uh, gets overused a fair bit uh, these days, but the whole idea is really about the internet connection of things. So we're seeing this really rapid growth in uh, the way that people are actually interacting with their homes and what people expect of their homes now. So smart home is about merging lifestyle and technology into one and really making it a seamless extension of what they already do within the home. Now, EnviroNexus, Melbourne's mm -hmm. startup company, can you explain to me this growth and the interest that you're getting? Are you getting a lot of positive feedback or has it been a bit of push and pull? No, absolutely. It's, uh, I guess we're seeing a very monumental change in the way that, uh, the way that this market's evolving. We've, uh, if you look at the last 10 years, for example, uh, 10 years ago there was about 500 million internet-connected devices. Uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Steve Jobs, you may have heard of, uh, in 2008 he uh, introduced us all to the iPhone and within a year we actually had more internet-connected devices than people on the planet. What we've found in the last five years is, uh, and certainly stepping forward for the next five years, we're going to get to a point where there's about 50 billion internet-connected devices in the home. So what that means is everything we've normally interacted with, the, uh, the door, the thermostat, the lights, just about everything throughout the home is now going to be internet connected and that's going to have an impact on how people actually interact with it and how they work with it. And people would be obviously using this using tablet devices and Absolutely. smartphone technology. So walk me yeah. through some of the stuff you've got here exactly. Sure. Sure. So what is, what is that in particular? So this is the, the geeky side uh, to what we do. This is the, uh, the part where it actually comes to the, the physical hardware. What we're focused on very differently to the way other companies are going about doing it is looking at retrofit technology. Mm -hmm. So rather than the new home market which uh, involves new wiring and, and new ways of approaching things, we sort of looked at it and thought in Australia alone there's 8 million established homes. So people really need a way to be able to actually connect these devices to the internet and to be able to interact with them from a hardware level. So very simple, easy technology that sits mm -hmm. behind their existing light switches and behind their existing devices in the home to be able to then connect them up so they can control them through the interface on the iPad. So you find that a lot of homes now, when they're being built, are getting introduced with this fit straight away from the bat? Absolutely. That was the, the surprising part, even though we focused uh, predominantly on retrofit. Yeah. We're now finding that uh, companies such as Metricon, for example, now we're actually offering EnviroNexus as a standard inclusion uh, in many of their high-end homes. So we've picked up both sides of the market, which has been a, a great gain for us on our side. Yeah. So what is it, like, as far as security risks, mm. let's just say you, know, you can open the door locks and things with yep. a smartphone device, is there a risk of security as far as somebody getting your phone and having access to potentially we, we isolated that very early in the piece. I think we, uh, we saw that uh, people are slowly becoming more comfortable with the idea that they can, uh, for example, internet banking uh, was a big security risk in the early stages and once they understood that it was a fairly secure way to do the uh, cash transactions, uh, that's, that's sort of obviously picked up on that side. I guess from our side we're looking at it from the point of view of one, the technology itself. So it's, uh, it's end point to end point encryption and all that really means is that there's actually no point where anyone can tap into that to be able to see what's going on which is a very important part. The other side is that uh, <coughs> we're actually building in methods inside of the, the interface. So one of the, the interesting parts with the new uh, iPhone release and the new Android releases will have biometrics, which means you'll actually need thumb pin recognition to be able to open your front door. So we can integrate what's native inside of smart devices and actually bring it in as a security level inside of the home. So there are obviously a lot of great things that are for the domestic use, but is there, what about the business side? So how can businesses get involved and what sort of yeah. aspects could you know could help them out there? Well, the natural extension, I guess, is that uh, from a business sense, you're also going to have internet connected devices. So uh, the same way in the car, we, we have a lot of sensors around the car that's telling us what's going on. There's a problem with the engine. There's uh, a need to have a look at the oil. There's uh, all of these things going on that we sort of take for granted now inside the car. Certainly from a business sense, that diagnostic, the analysis, the, the raw data that can come from the machines and actually communicate back is the important part to all of this. It's actually understanding what's going on before there's a problem so you can actually do something about it. So from a business sense, I think we'll see an increase in efficiency, uh, certainly see uh, decreases in cost because uh, they can 
change the way that they're actually currently going about maintenance and uh, general way, again, that they communicate throughout their business as well. Now, I read that people can monitor their energy uses using these devices. Yeah. Can you explain to me what sort of savings people can have and how easy or is it hard to use as far as the interface goes? Yeah, again, it's, uh, I guess it's a byproduct of what we do, uh, but uh, certainly one part that we've found of, of great interest to people because the Whenever there's an investment involved, uh, I guess the, the natural assumption should be there's a return of investment as well. So energy management makes that return of investment uh, something that's very real, very tangible. Uh, so what we found, we did some early trials when we were first looking at this and actually giving people transparency of data. So what that meant was uh, rather than just knowing my home is using X amount of kilowatts, actually saying to them what is each of your devices using, when is it using it and why is it using it. So by looking at that and understanding where their power is actually being used, uh, the early results actually came through at about a 40% savings. So when you're looking at energy bills now averaging about $2,000 a year, it starts to add up significantly. So that's, that's actually been a, a very interesting byproduct that's now sort of been a, a leading side of what we're doing, hence the, the EnviroNexus name. Yeah. So when do you think that this, this sort of will become a normal thing for people's homes to be able to control their, you know, their con air conditioning and open their doors or locks and whatnot and follow their home? Like when do you think this will become just the a standard. standard thing? Yep. With yep. Well, I guess there's a, there's a few things that need to happen, obviously. Uh, you know, certainly seeing the introduction into the new home market and having people walk into a new home with an expectation. If you look 10 years ago, again, uh, people were building homes without alfrescos. Now, you wouldn't consider building a home without an outdoor entertaining area of some sort. So once we see that transitional shift start to happen, which is really going through the process now, it's then those 8 million homes that are still out there. And that's going to be driven by the reason why they would look at investing in this technology. And the key part is that, yes, they can interact with their home. Yes, their home is going to tell them when things are going on and they can actually have a level of control from anywhere in the world. But the key part really is that the fact that they can control the expenses within the home, they can actually have an impact, and it's affordable technology. So by bringing the price down, and uh, everyone knows Moore's law, but the idea being that technology doubles and halves in price. So as we uh, as the years sort of pass by, we're going to find this drop significantly in price, and what that's going to do is open up uh, areas. But right now, it's really about looking at what your highest costs are, which is electricity, and uh, being able to maintain that and actually curb those costs down, which can be done today. And it sounds effective. like industry is, is keeping up with this trend by sounds of things. The industry itself in yeah. terms of building industry? The building industry and also yeah. the tech industry. Absolutely, like, you know, yeah. Your yeah. Apple and Samsung's and yeah. everything like that. It just seems like everything seems to be keeping up. Do you agree with Absolutely. that? Absolutely. But the, uh, again, smart devices have been revolutionary in the way that we uh, we look at things. The, the big paradigm shift is that we, we are really are the first generation to actually work out what these smart things mean to us. Yeah. Uh, so when we look at a smart device, the expectation is almost there that we're going to be able to achieve anything with that. It'll, it'll monitor my fitness, it'll tell me my finance, it'll tell me what my friends are doing via Facebook. So people have a very high expectation of technology now. Um, so again, we're finding the industry is a, a feedback loop. Uh, as people have a higher expectation, the industry itself then feeds more expectation into that, and we find that it tends to grow very quickly. Yeah. EnviroNexus is opening regional offices overseas now. Why, yes. you know, as far as expanding the company, are mm -hmm. you seeing dramatically you know, a dramatic growth stage now? Yeah. Huge. We, uh, I guess we're getting into that a lot earlier than what we, we had intended to. Uh, our thought was always, let's get our backyard right before we look at, uh, yeah. at anything bigger and taking on the world. It was seemed like a very ambitious scale. But uh, look, we, we have development houses in, uh, in Zurich and uh, San Jose. And uh, the combination between what we run here in Melbourne and the two development houses uh, over there means that we can actually build targeted solutions for the specific regions. So what we've found is that we're, uh, we're actually now in discussions with uh, Singapore, uh, with UK, uh, certainly with the US, uh, and even as far out as India, uh, for example, um, looking specifically at vertical markets. So it may be energy, it may be security, uh, and in fact the new forte now, which is in the, the healthcare side as well. So uh, it's all, all opening up very dramatically for us. Yeah.